So I just saw Ethicological's recent video, Why Antinatalists Should Be Vegan. This is uh, prompted from that video. It's basically a reiteration of her points. Uh, first off, if you're an antinatalist, the only logically sound variant of antinatalism is, I would argue, sentiocentric antinatalism. Because the point of antinatalism is that it assigns a negative value to birth. It identifies a negative value to birth. Because birth, inevitably, is inextricably linked to a organism experiencing sentient consciousness. And that inevitably entails that organism being in at least an instance or multiple instances of a negative state of consciousness. So the term sentiocentric antinatalism, again, sentiocentric simply meaning this doesn't only apply to humans. Obviously humans are not the only sentient organism. Non-human animals are sentient as well. So as far as ethical veganism goes, the animal agriculture industry, ethicological mentioned, is sustained by human-caused maximization of animal breeding. Billions upon billions of animals are bred into existence simply for the objective of unnecessary human consumption of those animals. So, as a sentiocentric antinatalist who is against procreation because of the fact that it inevitably entails unnecessary suffering, in order to be logical, you have to, as well, be against the unnecessary suffering that accompanies the breeding of billions upon billions of animals for the addiction to animal products and their consumption by humans. Any sentient organism, again, will inevitably, throughout the span of their existence, manifest negative qualitative states of consciousness. There will be positive as well, but myself and other ethicists argue that that positive is simply the perceptual result of the transition from a comparatively more negative to less negative state. So basically, it is the illusion that derives from the transition through time from a negative state to a less negative state. Regardless, the existence itself is unnecessary. And so, if that existence was bred into reality because of some unnecessary reason like human indulgence, then it's obviously unethical. As far as the grounds upon which sentiocentric antinatalism is based, Ethicological also mentioned the point about dietary veganism as far as the fact that it's been scientifically proven that you can still be healthy while being a vegan. First off, that's tangential to the subject of ethical veganism because ethical veganism is about the suffering, not about human health. But I would even go further. It's not only that it's been proven that you're still able to be healthy, and easily so. Dietary veganism, properly applied, allows you to be more healthy than a non-vegan. Although, it is more difficult in some ways than being an antinatalist in the sense that we eat multiple times every single day by necessity, generally speaking, unless you're so poor or for some other circumstantial reason, eat less times than that in the day. So if you are a sentiocentric antinatalist, which just means that you basically fit the description I've mentioned here in this video, and you're not a vegan, or you at least do not concede the logical integrity, the c conceptual integrity of ethical veganism, then perhaps it is simply due to your lack of discipline or some other such quality. Because as far as the logic goes, it's very simple. And also, as she mentioned, no one is able to completely eliminate all of the harm that they impose through the act of existing itself. But the point is, for one, 
negative utilitarianism is not going to actualize itself with no contributors, so we have to carry on the fight. But while we exist, the objective is still to just impose the least amount of harm as possible. And ethical veganism is part of that basic strategy.